Mr. War Machine. Welcome to Dark Match. How you doing? Uh, it is the week of fucking March 17th, 2012. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And we're here reviewing WWE. I'm Mr. War Machine. I'm Christopher says Dark Match is messing on in the monotone. Did you just introduce yourself to the show, War Machine? Yes, I did. I did, in um, fact. <clears throat> I'm the match tracker of Dark Match, make it fight free. And I'm Digi Fox, the fox that rocks your socks. And as always, we gotta start off the show with what is Iron Sheik tweeting now? The Dijon Blair, not family of Brain Blair. Not because he black, only because he is not the gay. Again, I, I state, is that really your Iron Sheik impression? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I never said I was good at, at impersonating the Iron Sheik. <laughs> wow. Better than me. No, I, I gotta be honest. Mega, you did a better job. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Fucking... Raw. Let's talk about it. Yeah, most uh, most of uh, what we're going to be talking about is it's not is going to be a little bit stilted in comparison to the to the whole John Cena Rock thing because like that's what pretty much everyone came away with uh, talking the most about from what I understand. As far as I'm concerned, this was SmackDown's week. Oh yeah, definitely. It was definitely the better show. But uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about uh, about Raw first. So, um. It opens up, they inform us that they are, in fact, in Cleveland. And uh, Jerry's in the middle of the ring. And he starts talking about uh, the rock concert and the John Cena freestyle. And and John Cena kicks it off, and he comes out uh, looking like it's it's 2003. It was quite the nostalgia trip, I gotta say. Yeah. Because that's the, that's the John Cena that I, for the most part, grew up with. Yeah, the backwards cap, the 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 best, the throwback basketball jersey, the the chain, uh, coming out to basic thugonomics, and what like a lot of people don't like, don't seem to grasp is that Doofy Cena is just kind of what the what they want him to do right now. Like his body language was complete, was quite distinct from like what you see these days. Really, oh yeah, really put over the 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 uh, the gimmick flip and kind of and and. Remi- again, reminded everyone that that he's capable of this kind of thing. So he comes out, and uh, to to a mixed reaction as per usual, and um, he does his thing, and it was short, concise, sweet, to the point, actually funny. Yeah. Remember those. Remember those words, because I'm going to bring it up again later. Yeah. Um. um among them. Uh, <laughs> The things that uh, everyone was throwing throwing the phrase "not PG" or, around was uh, him telling The Rock that he was going to give him a Cleveland steamer. <laughs> yeah, and that he wanted to shove his nuts in Rock's face. Oh, interesting should... choice of words. Yeah, I I didn't quite get what he was going for there, but you know, whatever. But yeah, it was really good, really funny. Um, he he didn't really uh, beyond the the jabs that we brought up. He's basically been saying what he's been saying for weeks with with variation, as opposed again remember that the word variation short concise. Uh, remember those words. And he he's been saying what he's been saying for weeks, but it's all the it's still poignant because really, you know, the rock has come back from it i mean you know he hasn't really said anything in return other than you're wrong i love this place you have a vagina Mm. and then you know hastily exiting the ring while cena's shaking his fist at him but yeah we'll tell you again about that once we get to his segment and uh yeah he does his thing leaves and that was that i i'm was that all we saw of cena tonight Pretty much. Yeah, as yeah. far as I know, yeah. Um, I and, and, think, and pretty much I love this segment. Well, yeah, we'll probably see him in his normal uh, demeanor uh, next Monday, but it was a nice treat. I hope he sticks with the intensity. I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to, um, or or at least be a little bit more smarmy 
or at least like stick with the smarmy Cena that we've kind of been getting for the last few weeks. Yeah. Where he's just but, like, yeah, know, I've heard it all before from you, The Rock. I don't care. Like, what, what do you have to say now? Yeah. yeah. We need to have that. But yeah, um, after uh, his whole segment, we next get Vicky Guerrero. And by the way, War Machine, what do you think of her these days? Like, are you as uh, are you as disgusted by her presence? Or then? And, uh, well, I was never. I mean, I just found her really annoying, and I hated how. I hated how they basically trotted her out for cheap heat, and then all they would do was make fun of how "quote unquote" fat she was, and it was annoying. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, one because I did. I never. I still don't particularly like the gimmick, even though she does it well. Um. Uh, and two, it's just like really, that's that's all you guys got. That's all you can come up with, you know. And oh. it was just, it was, and basically because it was the same five jokes over and over again. Yeah, the, the fat comments I definitely did like, but like I, I mean, I I don't think you consider what she was doing cheap heat. Like that's that's principally when you when all you do is insult the audience to to get booze rather than than well, no, something I, I like think... kayfabe that that they don't like. But um, well, we'll just have to disagree on that because well, I've brought that up several times on the show before. But right, uh, I, and I don't really feel like arguing about it now. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Ziggler versus Sheamus. Mm. Yeah, uh, Vicky Guerrero basically cuts a promo beforehand about how she she thinks uh, daylight savings time should be completely abolished. The, the fuck? Uh, I, I believe I forgot what it was. I think it had to do. I, compl- with the, I completely yeah. fucking forgot about that. They they have they lose like an hour of. Uh, God, I forgot. It was it was a I guess a topical joke that really, but mo- for the most part, throw away. So yeah, this match was pretty pretty good. Kind of short though, a raw match. Yeah. Like you, I mean you. If you have like uh, multiple talents, like in a single as a or tag match, you won't get a, a very long, very uh, drawn out match on Raw unless it's like at the end of the first hour or the second hour. And uh, to open, it was it was like I said, it was fun to watch. And for, uh, in particular, like I, every time I see Dolph Ziggler do the famous, or like he, he does it smoothly, mo- more smoothly each time. Yeah, definitely. But, but uh. Nonetheless, uh, Dolph Ziggler's not the one that they're that they're putting over t- to such an extent, unfortunately, these days. But Sheamus is, and he broke kicks him for the win. Well, I don't know about um, I don't know about all that. I mean, I personally, I mean, I think that Dolph should be put over a little bit more. But I mean, no, at the no, moment, I agree. At the at the moment, Sheamus just kind of needs a win to look strong to go into WrestleMania. And, and you're right. Like again, I'm I. Probably should have. I'm not against them putting over Sheamus, and I fully support the fact that, like, I really don't think that there's that that Brian's gonna come out of WrestleMania with the title. I mean, it's good that they're that they're giving Sheamus the the other world world championship to put him over even more. But, well, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I don't know about that. I, I mean, I'm personally kind of I'm personally kind of up in the air about it. I hope I hope Brian comes out of it still champion. I mean, I don't. This is one of those matches that I don't particularly care who wins, not because I don't care about the match, but because I like both guys. So in yeah, the end, yeah, same here. Um, so I, so in the end, I'll I'll, I'll come out happy. I'm, but um, I'm just looking forward I, I to the just, match. If they if they if they keep the belt on Daniel Bryan, you know, you you won't hear any crying from me. Right. Uh, and uh, oh, and speaking of Daniel Bryan, he they cut to him like in the skybox. Um, Talking with Josh Matthews, accompanied by AJ, and who who's starting to look like more and more mousy the more he's around her, as as he's more and more verbally abusive and possessive. And he, um, he he basically puts over uh, puts over their love and like how it how it fuels him and stuff like that, and is as douchey as he as he usually is. But uh, I, I just I. Mm. I thought of a Catherine joke. I'm going to keep it to myself. Um, okay. <laughs> um, Seamus wins. Uh, Bro kicks the shit out of Dolph Ziggler. Um, yeah. Good match. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, Seamus' Sh- matches, I mean, not that his matches were ever bad, per se, but um, I, I, I start to like them more and more. Uh, on their own merit uh, by Seamus's, you know, effort that he puts into them. Yeah. 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 
and not just like, oh, he's with this opponent, so of course it was a good match. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm beginning to, to like his matches more and more simply for the fact that he's in them. And also, I think there is one point about him that, that isn't belabored enough. Like, this time last year, although he had just won the U.S. Championship from, from Daniel Bryan, around this time, like, maybe give or take a week or two, um, people were still, like, saying, like, man, this guy's in the doghouse. He'll never recover. Like, Kevin Dunn hates him. And it's like, if ever you, like, have any anyone, any mid-carder or whatever, he, or any former world champion who's kind of floundering, who you think is not going to recover, he's proof positive that you can, and with a face turn, no less. Oh, yeah. But, um, and speaking... Yeah, it's really weird. I ne- He never struck me as one of those guys who could get over as a face. I always I always kind of saw him in just, like, perma-heel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, th- that's what I thought, too. But he he's actually really, really... He's won me over as a face, to be honest. Guess, guess America just loves those crazy, violent dudes who kick the shit out of bad guys. Mm. Yeah, especially if they're Irish, and especially if it's tonight. But yeah, especially if it's we're tonight. N- we're not here to talk about <laughs> festivities. Um, in a um, uh, after the match, we get a brief. Hype for uh, Laurinaitis for Team Laurinaitis versus Team Long. Uh, am I the only one who really doesn't give a shit about that? No, no, yeah, this is this is pretty taint amount to the WrestleMania's uh, ghastly uh, underbooked undercard for for the show. Um, they they have a quadruple main event, which say like say what you will about the the way they're like, building up Cena versus Rock. It's still going to be fun to watch, the, like a fucking monster of a quadruple main event but their undercard yeah. is eh. yeah yeah um, and and not only that but they're like oh look what's happening at wrestlemania we're not going to tell you about it until smackdown i mean yeah um yeah i i fully concur uh mark henry and santino morella versus david otunga hmm. whoa Whoa. It was. Uh, uh, it was. Th- this was written wrong as from the results that we're reading. It's yeah, it was actually yeah, David was, Otunga and Mark Henry. Uh, yeah, David that's, that's not right Mark at Henry all. Santino Morella. Yeah, this was this was all backwards. Um. Yeah. Lorne Ice is ringside for commentary. Uh, kind of, kind of want to die. Um. Uh, I'm here. It kind Talk of sounded like that. About the match. I'm vice, I'm vice president, town relations. Fucking someone get me a long cigarette or something. Yeah. The gist of it is, like, I'm pissed off that, that Santino Morello beat Jack Swagger for the U.S. Championship, won the rematch in a cage. So I'm going to fuck with him because I'm the general manager and he's on my show. And yeah. Because I, I don't have faith enough for Otunga to to uh, beat him for the U.S. championship in a singles match, I'm going to make it a handicap, and because I'd, I'd be burning, it's unfair. It's not for the U.S. title. So here's Mark Henry. About a minute long, two minutes long. Uh, David Otunga and Mark Henry win. Wasn't that good of a match. Then again, it has David Otunga and Mark Henry in it. So... How good can it fucking be? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was completely forgettable. Man. Like... I mean, I, I really don't, I really don't know what, what else to say about it. Yeah, it's like, and David Otunga week in and week out is looking more and more like just his shoulders, chest, and 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 upper back are, are just like the only part of his body affected by steroids, and, and <laughs> looks like he's taking a lot nonetheless. <laughs> like he just basically took like a bicycle pump and inflated those mi- muscles. It just doesn't look real. <laughs> Uh, yeah, some, someone's going to have a few well, wellness policy issues in the future. Or not, if they, they still think that he's going to be like one of their next stars. Yeah, I doubt that. But yeah, um, match ends. Uh, and Mark Henry and David Otunga are, are fucking with Santino, and Kofi comes out to, to make the save. But he gets a world strong slam for his troubles, and but out comes our truth the forming the tag team that are the name being tossed around is the hip hop express when well, Hip-hop. which really is, is somewhat, is somewhat, um, is somewhat of a misnomer 
Because other than, you know, the stereotype, there's nothing really hip hop about Kofi Kingston. <laughs> yeah, and there's and there's and the fact that he has like a a, a sort of uh, new reggae kind of theme is lost because he's from Ghana. Now they're billing him from where he's actually from. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I mean, I guess if they if they gave him like a, a hip hop theme or something like, you know, I, I don't know, don't believe the hype. Um, you know, I, I guess I guess it would make sense, but I, I doubt they're going to change his theme. Mm. But basically, the the gist of all this, Mark Henry also takes out uh, truth. The gist of all this is that uh, Laurinaitis announces Mark Henry as the newest member of his team, which again they they just kind of hand wave introduced and didn't really didn't really build up. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, guys, Mark Henry's on my team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, they're get, they're keeping Mark Henry's career hanging on by a thread. Yeah, they're they're keeping it afloat. <laughs> uh, we go to a video of Miz on Psych, which I haven't seen that episode yet, but you know it's probably good. Psych's generally a pretty funny show. Oh my God! Oh yeah, here comes the 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 hype for the Divas uh, match of WrestleMania. Once again, yeah. basically the what they're the rumors and evidence by Roth is most likely what they're going to go with is that Beth Phoenix and Eve, because she's a heel, are going to take on Kelly Kelly and uh, Maria Menounos from Extra, which show I haven't watched since I was in middle school. Uh, who? I don't know. I've I've never heard of this person ever. It's like I she's guess on extra. It's That's she's it. she's represented by the channel that airs their tribute to the troops in WrestleMania uh, Rewind or whatever that. Okay, happened. but okay, but why is she doing that? Because of what because, I just said. Because she's famous, I guess. I don't know. No, I, I'm talking but, about in in story in story. Why is she wrestling? Just because, like, she. Uh, uh, was talking yeah. shit about divas on on extra, or she was making like weird jokes or whatever. Yeah, it might have been a Twitter thing too. Yeah, you know, they like to drag Twitter into this, kicking and screaming if need be. Yeah, they're 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 really trying to use Twitter as a as part of their show. Like, oh, this is what this person said. It's like, which really, yeah. you know, I I honestly wouldn't mind so much if they didn't do it all the time. Yeah, and that's the problem. They do do it all the time. Yeah. It's overexposed. It is doo-doo indeed. <laughs> you said doo-doo. <laughs> uh, maturity. Um, it's, it's it's like WWE's discovered the internet for the first time. And, oh, we, we, we have a website. You Lord, know, imagine on if the they internet. found Imagine if they found out about Live Journal back in the no, I remember back in the Attitude Era where they were just using these like newfangled uh, computer and internet terms and adding this and an exclamation part to it, like "bite this," "download this." Oh yeah, yeah. that was yeah, yeah, bite, on bite this lasted until um, "bite this" lasted until the Matt Hardy uh, Edge Lita interview. Oh. <laughs> Oh God! That well, actually, was... I believe then Todd Grisham hosted and, and trolled people who uh, TNA fans. Yeah, well, TNA fans would call into the show, <laughs> yeah, and, like talk and talk shit about WWE. So he would just he'd call them like retards and stuff like that. Yeah, he would. <laughs> it was so funny. But yeah, amid like all this this Maria Menounos stuff, like Eve Torres is interacting with Zack Ryder and basically. She she basically has him by the balls. I guess you. What power does she have over this man? Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. They, I, they... I get it. Eve's Eve is smoking hot, but I mean, come on. She admitted on national TV that she used you to get famous. Zack Ryder's <laughs> kind of a. He's kind of like the the puppy dog. Like he's they they the WWE is not really not content with portraying him as any bit of a badass. Like his U.S. title run was pretty much shit um and this is what he's doing nowadays uh, eve says that they they could be friends with benefits which that which actually like yeah. <laughs> you you like the idea of the, the friends with benefits i don't know 
it's just from 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 where I stand, uh, I've, I've Zack Ryder is lucky. Oh well, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, and, and then Beth I, Phoenix. I would, agree, I would agree with you there. Uh, sh- do we have to talk about the next match? Um, oh, the next match. Uh, Boris Clay versus Jinder Mahal. Guess what? Squash. <laughs> Oh yeah. no 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 no! Oh. Brodus Clay wins. As if that was going to go any other way. No, we 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 skipped over a segment. Ms. Uh, Ms. Oh, on Laurinaitis, yeah. where Ms. is lobbying to be on Team Laurinaitis, and and he has James Roday from from Psych with him. Uh. Oh, we'll get back I, to Roday. I have to ask the question: Who the fuck is James Roday? He's the white guy on Psych. That doesn't change anything. <laughs> He's the white guy on Psych. That's not all. That isn't all the viewers of it. Hmm? Yeah. D- d- see, this is the thing. He's, that he's the white. Does. He's the white funny guy on Psych without his black funny guy. So automatically, there's a problem. The, the, the WWE really likes to put a lot of stock in that. We actually watch TV, and we know who all these assholes are. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Basically, like the, he's going to be the ring announcer for Mrs. Match with CM Punk later on. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. We may as well talk about that. Like that's that was kind of obnoxious, but we'll get to it. Um, and yeah, uh, Mega Fighter pretty much put over Brodus Clay versus Jinder Mahal as well as we could. This doesn't mean that we're not having fun with Brodus Clay around. It's just that Vince, like I don't, I don't know exactly what Vince wants it from him if the rumors are to are to be believed where he says he, he took him off television because he didn't like his work rate. Those, those, those three moves that he told him to do. And, uh, now he's bringing him back and having him do the same thing, but he's wearing his white outfit and he opens it to reveal a black singlet. It's pretty cool. I guess I'd like to see someone actually feud with him. Like apparently the, the it's being tossed around and he's going to do the feud with the Miz, which I wouldn't mind. He, he, I, someone like Rodus Clay would undermine uh, Miz's like dignity and upstage him because the crowd <laughs> wants to see him a lot more, a lot more than the former musty WWE champion. But, but what do I know? Um, so yeah, Bro- Brodus Clay, he, he he still has a pretty good run in him. Eventually, the routine's gonna tire out, you know, a la Flash Funk. But for now, it's still going strong. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Earth's Clay wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Shawn Michaels backstage. Yeah, uh, and he walks out, talks about Triple H. Uh, he talks about the confrontation last week. And uh, he brings up the fact that uh, Triple H says that everyone backstage w- calls him a loser and a failure. He brings up, he said, well, no one's called me a loser and a failure to my face. And then he brings up that he, the only man he hasn't talked to, uh, which I'm sure, I'll give you three guesses who it is. Undertaker. <laughs> uh, ooh, cl- close. David, the, David Cooley. Close, uh, close. The answer is Undertaker. Um, he not, not so under calls face. Undertaker out. Out walks Undertaker, and he's like, "You and me, we got history. We've sat in the locker room together before." That means we're close. Um, and Undertaker brings up, he's like, Sean, you're insecure. And then Sean's like, no, you are. See, here's the thing about this promo. I, I liked it better than the ones that they've been having, the three of them have been having for like the, the past few weeks because it was much quicker. I thought um, yeah. Sean got to a point. And I actually liked what uh, he had to say about well, the point that he had to say to Taker, because Taker basically said, like, I don't want you to let your ego get in the way. Like, if the the win, if my win or my loss is not pure, then then I'm going to kick your ass. And Sean basically says, you know how ironic it is that even though I was not able to beat you for two years, I could be the one that turns you into a loser and a failure by, ca- by counting a pinfall against you. Like, that's the power I have. I could still, I could end this streak, technically. It was a nice, uh, nice barb that he threw his way. And it's good yeah. And, um, 
Taker goes, oh, well, WrestleMania 28 will officially be the end of an era. And if, uh, and then he says he'll, and he says, uh, and if Sean doesn't do the right thing, he'll officially end Sean, which I thought was pretty badass. Yep. Sounds like Taker. Uh, Sean, uh, Sean, like, kind of backs up and, like, stands there and thinks for a moment. And get and this smirk kind of washes across his face. And as he's leaving, he sort of just, like, pats Undertaker's arm. Like a, like a patronizing pat. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I was so expecting <laughs> patronizing a pat. slam. I'm a genius. And it didn't happen. Mm. It's, yeah, and, on, on St. Patrick's Day, no less. Oh, shit. <laughs> It works yes, on Triple levels. H, all that green. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, and true, true, the last thing Triple H does is give Taker a crotch shop, as if to say, and believe me, I'm not devaluing this, but as if to say, remember, Taker, I'm the one you're feuding with. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, I, I'm, I'm an important part of this match. Hey, I'm, I'm not I'll the third wheel here, guys. Minutes. See, they should have just done this last year. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I kind of get why... Um, I mean, I get why they're bringing Sean into it, because last year Sean really wasn't a big part. But they really should have just done something like this last year. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been I think it would have been far more poignant. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but I but like if nothing else, like this kind of thing makes me care like a bit more about the match. I mean, I know it's probably gonna be good to begin with. Just the the two will will bust their ass beyond beyond all uh, human belief, but again, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. glad that they're making me care about this. Uh, yeah, so they leave, and up next, CM Punk versus The Miz. I'm sure you can guess who won. Mm. Yeah, um, and this this is the old, the whole, whole thing with James Roday, where he, he announces... Uh, both contestants and man his voice is fucking nasal I mean yeah I know that it's like supposed to be either comedy or he's supposed to annoy us I don't I don't know what the deal is but I he just kind of has a nasally voice I mean you know it doesn't change I mean I, I he, they probably shouldn't have put him on the announcing uh, commentary would probably be better suited but um yeah I, I agree with you there it wasn't a good place for him. Few tidbits, few tidbits about this match. Number one, uh, Chris Jericho is shown walking backstage uh, as Punk is like gearing up. Number two, this is in Miz's hometown, and he does get the pops. And of course, because it is his hometown, he loses. <laughs> and yeah. number three, uh, th- if Miz wins, he wins. He's on Team Laurinaitis. So, th- wow, that's not exactly much of an honor. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, um, no. <laughs> Not even because, like, I mean, yeah, I know, he'll blah, blah, blah. But, like, the, the match is not something I'm looking forward to. And this is not much of a match. It's very... Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty much a glorified squash. Yeah, even, it's even, as far as I remember, shorter than the ziggler Sheamus one. Um, it it ends with uh, Punk Anaconda Vicing uh, Miz and getting the win. After the match is far more significant than the actual match, oh, yes, however. Yes. And uh, so, Punk celebrating in the ring, and uh, Jericho appears on the screen. He's uh, he's doing the slow clap, and uh, he he basically comes out and he's just like, "Oh yeah, well I did some digging. Guess what I found?" Uh, he reveals to the casual WWE audience. I bring up casual because they've done this before, so it's nothing really big. They did this in ROH. Yes. Uh, he reveals to the audience that uh, CM Punk's dad uh, was an alcoholic. Mm. Um, and he, you know, he says that CM Punk's dad let him down. His dad uh, failed CM Punk in terms of being a parent. And uh, really, uh, he, he didn't provide him the best living environment and such. And Jericho goes on to say that uh, alcohol is in Punk's genes and that when he beats him at WrestleMania and takes the WWE title away from him, uh, it's going to drive CM Punk to drink uh, because he actually, and he, you know, uses Jericho troll logic to say that because alcohol is in his genes and his dad was an alcoholic, he craves alcohol and everything he 
and everything he does is um is to uh suppress the urge for alcohol so down to the tattoos you know and uh, he says that he's going to turn CM Punk into exactly what his father was, a pathetic drunk. And, uh, and, and, and then and then disappear. <laughs> so, uh, away goes Chris Jericho. And Punk actually for once looks like he's been dealt uh, a low blow in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, dirt mudslinging in a feud. <laughs> He he so he sold it perfectly. Yeah, he definitely he, he lo- lost his focus. Like he wasn't looking at this with a with a smirk. He wasn't looking at it to like to just shoot back an insult. It, it, Chris Jericho has gotten into CM Punk's head, and it 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 was an evil fucking promo. I loved it. Oh yeah, it was <laughs> like I I didn't know justice. You, seriously, just look it up on YouTube or something. Or if you have a DVR and you haven't watched Raw yet, well, one, why the fuck are you listening to yeah. the show? Two. Um, uh, you seriously should, if you're not going to watch Raw for anything other than this, it would be totally worth it. Mm. And because, like, before. Jericho turned up the slime to a level that I, maybe it's because I haven't been watching wrestling for really all that long when you think about it, but, uh, that I have never seen him turn it up to before. And I watched him punch Shawn Michaels' wife in the face. Albeit it was an accident. Yeah, yeah. I, I I watched him smash China's hand with the hammer <laughs> after he tied her to a chair and kidnapped her. That specific segment I don't remember. But like, yeah, it, it, I don't really it was remember. late ninety nine. A few a few yeah. things about uh, this promo also is that Jericho, what he's saying is going to happen to Punk. Like he, he, it's sort of rooted in reality about like. Uh, sons of like alcoholics or, or generations like. For, uh, following like there is a predisposition but but this is a case of like nature and nurture like in terms of um nurture punk's circumstances would probably prevent him from from ever resorting to that even in kayfabe who knows me they might even try something like that but i but, i just hope i just hope that they don't like completely rip off the raven versus punk angle and have they might and have jericho try to force alcohol down his throat they might. i mean they they almost they went a similar route like sort of went that way when when he was feuding with J, jbl right after he won the title or like just a brief segment <laughs> but but yeah as war machine said this comes from uh from a bunch of promos punk cut on on raven when they were feuding in roh basically punk despised raven because he reminded him as, of his father who had like come home smelling of, of beer all, all the time, like come home late smelling of beer, like getting the go in the shower with like a, a bottle of bourbon, like that kind of thing. And for, and coming from the, the the person he's facing this other time is actually kind of a decent spin on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little reverse little thing. <laughs> but yeah, um we have But our- uh we go to a break and when we come back we get a promo for the law offices of David Otunga. Yeah, it's it's a <laughs> not really chintzily produced, basically uh, uh ambulance chasing uh infomercial. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> Otunga it, is a Twitter I, lawyer. It's like uh, I was like, really? This is what this is what you're sticking him with. Oh, all right. He's he's fine. I, I'm I'm happy with him in that role and like he's he's actually doing all right. But um, we have our next match: Randy Orton versus Jack Swagger. Barn burner, this one. Ah, <laughs> this <laughs> is. Uh, and if Revolver Man was in the, was on the show t- tonight, he he would be raging hardcore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, but basically, this, we're talking about a match with uh, Jack Swagger coming off a, a very poor United States Championship reign. Versus a guy who, again, this is not his. He's not feuding with Jack Swagger. It doesn't matter. He's feuding with Kane, and he's obviously going to just RKO him after Swagger gets a good amount of offense in. Yeah. More or less what happens. Basically, Orton wins, and we move on to the real main event. Oh, the, God. This is the fucking overlapping main son event. Son of a All of it. Or, okay. Uh, allow me to do the honors, gentlemen. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, we get a replay of uh, 
John Cena's freestyle. And then uh, they're just like, well, you know, you saw that, now you're about to see the rock concert, which has never been funny. So we're going to drag it out of the depths because we want you to think it's late, early 2003 when the rock was just about to leave. We're making Hollywood rock face, guys. All right, stop. I'm going to stop myself now. It was questionable then. Ugh. All right, so Rock comes out, he's holding his guitar, and he informs the crowd that uh, they've broken a record. It's the biggest uh, WWE crowd in the history of the company, which <laughs> is, well, yeah, which is dubious at best. Um, but we're not, but we're not here to, um, we're not here to talk about the the legitimacy of record breaking crowds and such. Uh, Rock, before he even starts playing on the guitar, starts making <sighs> jabs about John Cena that we've we've heard the Vanilla Ice jab a few times. But we've never heard the Vanilla Ice having sex with a Teletubby joke. Oh, Which, oh yeah. It, it basically, and this, this segment of his promo is, is so awful because he family guys the joke. It's basically him saying... For those of you who were not conscious when either of these references were relevant, it's this guy over the yeah. See this goofy-looking white guy with the d- d- multicolored with the blonde and brown streaked hair, and and that like kitty creature with a with a purse, who was relevant sometime in the mid two thousands because some jerk off thought that he that uh, he was gay. That John Cena is those two having sex. And of course, Jeez. and of course, the crowd eats it right up. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get back to the crowd, Very but uh, let's let's actually get into the promo. So he sits his microphone in the stand, and he puts his guitar in his lap, and Rock shows his mastery of the G chord. He basically plays the same chord for the, the entire time. There's no variation whatsoever. So he destroys Jailhouse Rock. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely ruins it. But we're going to get to a song, another song that he absolutely fucking ruined. Um. So, Rock starts uh, singing Cleveland Rocks, and it's all about Cena. Yeah, and the the very first quip he throws at Cena is actually the best one, the only good one too. Yeah, the only good one. He he actually brings up the fact that Cena is married outside of um outside of the WWE by referencing him kissing Eve uh after the Kane debacle. Yeah. Oh, well, very very this. Bret Hart accusation there. Shawn Michaels against Bret Hart. Kinda, um, kinda. So then he jumps onto uh, Rock, uh, the fact that Cena has a vagina. Uh, no. You know, Kung Pao Bitch is thrown in there somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, and he insults Cena's fans. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he asks Good if idea. there are any men in the crowd who are fans of John Cena. And then he insults them, and he says that they're all Trekkie virgins who've never had a girlfriend. Which I'm way sure is ins- not fucking true. Way to insult the crowd, Mr. Rocky. Fantastic. Let's just insult the entire fan base while you're at it. Yeah, it's like can convert <laughs> those people to, to cheering for you, but it um too bad you won't be around after WrestleMania. Maybe a few couple raws. Uh and so then Rock sings about seen his wife who I I don't remember the specifics but I'm pretty sure he claimed to have sex with and no, seen no, his no, mother wasn't seen his wife it was oh we're going to get to seen his mom and seen his mother who's dead is that true apparently I I couldn't I from what I understand I've heard from multiple sources that his mother is in fact dead and has been dead for years so yeah. yeah, so yeah. Keep it classy, now, now Rock. not only have you claimed to have sex with the with another man's mother, which, whatever, schoolyard taunts, <laughs> but uh, but you've also but you've also added necrophilia 
to uh, the list of crimes that Rock has committed. Yep. This <sighs> Yeah. Oh, he also insults uh, Cena's sexuality multiple, multiple times and insinuates that Cena is, in fact, gay. Yeah, like, no one's done that before. You know, I, I, find, he, I, I find this quite curious. Rock gets, to, Rock gets to pretty much blatantly call Cena gay, but if Cena says that Rock can blow him, Glad is all up his ass. <laughs> I I see. I don't understand how that works. Not enough can be said about that. Uh, Glad sticking up for a good cause have been known have been known to be pretty uh, sharp and uh, Pete ask about this. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, Rock gets to bring up Cena's sexuality as a neg as a negative, and you know, get to the real offense. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, God. Here it goes, people. <sighs> Rock says this next song is is a karaoke rendition for Team Bring It. Wonderful! <laughs> it's to the tune of We Will Rock You by Queen. Oh, fuck. Ah! This, is, this is terrible. And Freddie Mercury has spun through the center of the Earth, and I'm pretty sure he landed somewhere on Mars. You, you, you could hook some electrical wires up to Freddie Mercury and power all of China with how much <laughs> spinning he was doing in his grave. Ugh. So, <laughs> the, you want to know what the best part of this is? It's karaoke rendition. He botches the lyrics initially so bad that he's just reading off of the teleprompter. <laughs> that he just starts reading off of the screen, which is for the fans. And even as he's reading off of the screen, he's still botching the lyrics. Yeah, he's, he's stuttering. He's not getting the rhythm right. I didn't hear this, quite honestly. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I was, I was tired of it when he was, uh, when he was talking about uh, was it was, getting off with, his, with uh, Cena's passed away mom it was awful awful oh my god i can't it, it literally has to be seen to be believed how awful this truly was and the fans oh my god like taking candy from a baby this was and you know what this has been the real problem with why the Rock's promos have been so stagnant, boring, and cliched. Because the fans are eating this shit up. Like, if you remember, circa last year, literally this time, Rock was lighting Cena up. Oh my god. He was destroying Cena every week. Even though Cena would try to come back as hard as he could, Rock was absolutely leveling Cena on the promo field. And now that he's back, you can literally see that there is such a stark drop from the quality of promos that I'm pretty sure it gave Gwen Stacy whiplash. <laughs> I mean, it was horrible. Oh my God. I, I, I don't have the words as a kind. I don't have the words and I'm pretty good at just at talking. <laughs> know your big words so i i just uh I'm, my my mind is failing me at how bad this is i don't even want to talk about this anymore someone else take over please okay this was so, such a terrible attempt at comedy yeah it, it's, Here's the thing. it's like I'm sorry how is it that the rock has somehow made worse jokes than i regularly do and is getting more cheers for it because you're not the, and that's what it boils down to. He's getting cheers not because he's not because he's the Rock and he's awesome, but simply because he's the Rock, and that's a problem. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm I get the nostalgia act. You know, when they bring in Stone Cold, I I mark like a schoolgirl. However. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and and plus, like as much 
people could like make the argument that when Stone Cold comes back, oh, he's only there to stun her and, and do a non-alcoholic beer bash. But he looks like he's having fun while doing it. Like he's excited. He gets the crowd into it. Like he it's not like it's we, we know it's not like he will know number one he'll be back to do it to do a similar thing and like we know we'll know we know he'll eat it up and we know that uh it, it it's just like again the the, the build up with to the rock and Cena's match the, has been kind of bullshit uh, the bullshit <laughs> is putting it kind it's fucking <laughs> horrible it's i mean i bullshit. i can't even accurately like convey how bad it's been. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, by, by our WrestleMania review, I, I will be able to accurately convey how bad it's been because I'll have, to, I'll have had time to digest it. But I, I just, I can't... The, uh, I, f- mm. did, 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 did anybody feel like their intelligence is being insulted by these promos? Yes. Like, yeah. somehow... I, I, this, this as, is... as someone who... I, I'm Granted... <laughs> When I started watching wrestling, it was pretty much the tail end of of The Rock in terms of, you know, him being around. But I've seen enough of his stuff from the Attitude Era to know that he is so much better than this. And, and, And it's slacking. It's lazy and it's slacking. And really, if you didn't want to do this... You know, which which is really what it's coming off like he didn't want like he just doesn't want to do this. And, you know, or, or, and I've kind of been, I, I don't want to roll with this theory, but this is just kind of what I, I'm thinking. Uh, I, I'm thinking he's torpedoing his promos to make Cena look better, which he really doesn't need to do. I don't even think it's management so much as it's just Rock thinking, you know, thinking that, you know, well, I kicked his ass last time. I want it to, I want it to be even. And, you know, really, and it's, he's suffering for it because he looks like an idiot every week. Uh, yeah, well, well, at this, this point we'll be much belabored uh, in our in our next uh, Raw episodes and also at, in the WrestleMania pay-per-view how, how their match turns out. So, uh, but nonetheless, we should probably get to SmackDown. Um, yeah, we still have one more show to review. Yeah, and my God, I'm... I'm just, I mean, I know that we were watching this last night, but man, they had a long opening with uh, Christian. Yeah, they did. Very drawn out. Um, really long. Good God. The return of the Christian, show. accompanied by the return of the Peep Show. And basically what what he does is he kind of sets up like a an argument between uh, Teddy Long and John Laurinaitis with the, the pretense of, of convince me to 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 want to be a part of uh, either of your team. And yeah, so it's fairly heel. Yeah. And uh, but the fans are welcoming him back. They're they're happy to see him. Uh, I re- and you know his, his return really reminded me of how much I miss his waterproof his waterproof blonde theme. Me too. <laughs> I love that. It yeah, <laughs> it was so much better than this one. Because when I listen to it, and I'm I'm going to. I'm going to get on a brief tangent here. It just makes me think of all that's wrong with mainstream rock music nowadays. No, I know. It's, and, and the funny thing is, this isn't, isn't even at the point when story of the year is, um, is in the limelight. I remember, yeah, I remember back when, in like around 2004, I think it was when, when they were fuck that. But, um, nonetheless, their, their cover basically sounds like they're going through the motions of the, of, of the tune. Yeah. When they should, when they could have just used the water for blonde theme. But um, but anyway, it is the return of the Peep Show. I mean, it was fun and Yay. like it was it was set up pretty well. I mean, yeah, it was it was a good times, good times. Yeah, basically, Christian says, "Oh, the the one thing you can do to convince me to join is give me what what I deserve, one more match." And at that, like the the crowd definitely the crowd starts booing him. They they start turning on him. Um, but of course, Laurenitis is the one. Who, who promises it to him. Like, it's obvious which team he's going to join. Teddy Long basically says, like, you've been annoying me, and the more I annoy you, the less I want to give you one more match. Mm-hmm. So, uh, basically, they, they're 
they're uh, going at it. Oh, by the way, he goes for the real cheap heat by insulting uh, Columbus, saying that they're they may not be the smartest crowd in the world, but even they know what I deserve. Yeah, it was it was like, oh, come on, man. And and oh, and just to to set up like the SmackDown, the crowd was damn hot for it, and also. Uh, should have mentioned uh, in the beginning that uh, our own uh, Tifus was there. Hmm. He and a bunch of uh, and about six other people were were uh, at the show and ate it up. Honestly, wish he was around to talk about it, but he's probably having fun and getting drunk somewhere. Who the hell knows? Yeah, somewhere. We don't want drunk Tifus. But hmm. uh, yeah. Well, we don't want drunk Tifus because of what's going on on the show. <laughs> yeah. Um. What was I going to say? I completely forgot. Well, okay. I'll, I'll say something here. Uh, this setup between Team Laurinaitis, Team Long, for control of both shows, it, it actually kind of makes me care about the angle a little bit. And and that's fucking hard to do. Yeah. You you are because, right. Like, they are kind yeah. of marginalizing it. It seems less of a, of a inner brand feud than a SmackDown feud. But... I'm I'm willing to accept that. Um, nonetheless, uh, at the end of this, all Christian joins a t- Team Laurinaitis, and as we would expect, we would have expected Teddy threatens to put him in a match. Laurinaitis says he's not 100% medically cleared, so Teddy and said says uh, David Otonga, you're going to be in a match with newest member of Team Long, and it's Kofi Kingston. Yeah. So that leads us to David Otunga versus K- Kofi Kingston. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh... Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, get him off of my TV. I'm sick of seeing him. <laughs> I mean, there's a corollary. Like, uh, Otunga pretty much gets humiliated in every episode. He's like, it's like Heath Slater, basically. Like, the. Well, yeah, except Heath Slater at least had some modicum of talent. For for me, for me, Jinder Mahal is the one who I just unequivocally don't. <laughs> yeah, because Jinder Mahal has no talent. You know, like, eh. they, I, I just want Otunga off my TV. I want him off my TV again. It, it, WWE was fun to watch when David Otunga wasn't on my TV. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And look, like, at the also, David, look at the Attitude Era. David, David Otunga wasn't there, and it was fun to watch. Yeah, the, the, the new know. generation era, there was no David Otunga. E- even, even recently, like 2008, no David Otunga. <laughs> I don't know. What about the Nexus angle? Was he still annoying to watch then? No, because he never spoke. Hmm. Yeah, he was Wade Barrett really doing the talking. He kind of so even was, when David Otunga was there, it was better with no David Otunga. Yeah, David do, Otunga like pretty Steve much. Team, the only yeah. thing he did then was pick people up and thrust them forward in what's I guess supposed to be a spine buster. Um, mm-hmm. That's all he really, we really cared to see him do. But, but again, I I think like he's been a bit better. He's perfect as like a stooge. Like it's. I think he's perfect not being on my TV. He, he's he's a tool, nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> the, the basic psychology of this match was that the people at ringside, Teddy, Teddy Long and Lauren Ice, were bickering. Oksana was, like, clinging on to Teddy. Uh, Christian was interrupting the match and to the point where he get, eventually gets thrown out. And, and of course, as I said, uh, Otunga gets humiliated by eating a trouble in paradise. And they, if you watch the replay, you can see Otunga's face. He, he plays, pulls, like, a great uh, thwarted, oh, heeled, shocked face. Um fun to watch but but hey yeah i mean yeah it probably would be good for him not to be on the television but who cares you're gonna put him on there anyway uh. <laughs> so that just happened uh, next match please oh uh, we, have to, we have to talk Daniel about Bryan. the backstage segment with daniel bryan and aj oh yeah that was <laughs> You can't skip talk, this. Talk about, the, talk about the 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 dick punch of the night. I mean, I guess in AJ's case, it would be the ovary punch of the night. Yeah. But, oh. So uh, Daniel Bryan buys. Uh, we see Daniel Bryan. He's pacing back and forth outside of this door, and it's the Divas locker room. And AJ comes out in this uh, short dress, 
and uh, she looks she looks good in it. And uh, but she brings up that she doesn't think that it fits right. And I don't remember what she what the exact complaint was. All I remember was that she said she didn't think it fit right. Yeah. And his and she's modeling it for uh, Daniel Bryan and almost completely oblivious. And he he pulled it off to where and while it was really mean and dickish, it was kind of at the same time funny. Because of just how completely oblivious to the fact that she has feelings he was. He just goes, yeah, you're right. It looks so much better on the mannequin. You can see the look on her face. It either. Um, there, there's something wrong. Uh, and not, I wouldn't say oblivious, just he doesn't give a fuck. Um, well, no, I mean, it, it, it sounded to me just like he just completely was just, like, not aware of the fact that that would hurt someone. Yeah, it's it's great that uh, Daniel Bryan's performance as a heel comes with him being one of the most hollow fucking people ever. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not even... And when I say that, it's not just, like, he's he's an idiot so much as he's a sociopath. Yeah, the, 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 the title of the World Heavyweight Champion basically uh, possessed him like the... The, uh, the the hell spawn worm from Jason Goes to Hell. <laughs> and, uh... Basically, he, he puts her over and says, like, he, he they have to be the new power couple, like like Randy Savage and Elizabeth and uh, Triple H and Stephanie or even Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, which I found funny because of his whole, like, righteous vegan and their whole uh, righteous uh, adopt African children. Yeah. but Well, I, I can draw the comparison to Savage and Elizabeth because it was almost the same thing. Yeah, there was that. Yeah, there was that element. Savage being kind of subtly abusive towards mm-hmm. Elizabeth. But and not Triple H and Stephanie, because Stephanie wore the pants. Yeah, basically he says, I'm, I'm the world champion, you have to be the Divas champion, and I spoke to some people higher up, and I got you a match that could lead to a title match for you. But you must listen to everything I say. <laughs> so he he went from abusive boyfriend to Mr. Miyagi with a power trip. I mean... <laughs> yeah, and um, I'd like to interrupt our discussion of SmackDown, because... I. I just got this as as we're um, speaking. Brian Danielson has a Facebook, and he just blogged notes about how AJ can be a better diva. I'll read <laughs> off each one. Number one, be taller. Not sure how. How about trading in those Chuck Taylors for a nice p- pair of heels? <laughs> Number two, <laughs> adopt a strict vegan lifestyle and stay mentally and physically fit. Maybe if you stop eating eggs, you'll stop walking on eggshells on, all the time. <laughs> number three then this one like oh fuck this one is one of the most subtly but subtle but my god it's it's just fucking ooh. highlight your beauty through silence be seen <laughs> and not hurt oh my translation set women back 85 to 100 that shit is fucking brutal even more <laughs> wow oh my god number four Focus on inspiring others as a role model, exhibiting real beauty on the inside and outside, like me, which contradicts number three. <laughs> How about trading in those skulls you wear on your clothes for the butterfly of the diva's title? Ooh. Not only does he want to oppress her and repress her, but he's a he's a corporate um he's the the a corporate tool. Remember that quote unquote gamer really means quote unquote loser couch potato. <laughs> Oh, fuck you, Danielson. I fuck hate you. you, dude. Well, uh, you, 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 you would think that he would be cool with couch potatoes because potatoes are vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven. Only champions have enough discipline to not get fat from eating vegan animal crackers. Please stop asking me to share and buy a second box. <laughs> Number eight. Just consider that Pokemon is a silly children's game and will prevent people from taking you seriously. Oh, fuck you. I... <laughs> I'm offended. Hey, we got Me- Mega Fighter to say something. I play Pokemon all the time. I'll, I, yeah. I'd like to add, from a personal standpoint, AJ, he's right. Stop playing Pokemon and get into uh, the Megaten universe. <laughs> oh, um, go to hell. Uh, number nine, and finally number nine, to create a constant glow, fill yourself with the blissful reality that you are dating the world heavyweight champion! <laughs> I hear that in, in that voice of his. Um, oh my god. That I'm was surprised I'm surprised he held off from saying stay in the kitchen at any point. He he pretty much said just that with with that third one. 
I fucking... That was fucking hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> that was... I mean, like... He's so awesome as yeah. a heel. <laughs> he's <laughs> so much better as a heel than he is a face. It's, it's I mean, and, and the best thing about this is, like, this is bringing him more recognition. Like, his heat's pretty much rising every week. Like, if they continue to, like, do good things with him, then, like, again, he could eventually make that make that turn later on. He, he It's like he sure knows what buttons to press to alienate his fan base. Take a fucking hint, Rock. <laughs> I fucking, okay, so, all right, let's just get into the match before we keep talking about this. Um, so, uh, it's Nikki Bella with Brie uh, versus AJ with Daniel Bryan. And, um, and so, at the beginning of the match, uh, Nikki gets on her, Nikki gets on her knees because she's, like, gargantuan compared to AJ. Yeah, mocking her. Like, My God, that woman is small. I don't think I've ever really noticed how small she is. When I looked at Daniel Bryan, who's also a small guy, and she's like two heads shorter than him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just to prove how, how completely small she is, the first thing she does is she just stands in front of Nikki, like jump, leaps in the air, and just nails her with a front drop kick. Oh, yeah. And, Com- we, mentioned, and we mentioned Nikki Keith sells is- it. Yeah, like she completely like arches backwards, and like her the top of her head hits the mat, and then she like folds. It looks like she got hit with a gunshot. Mm. But, it was, uh, it was and, awesome. And Tifus uh, again, who was there, said basically said that this spot and the selling of it, uh, furthermore, was his was his favorite of the night. And my God, like that it was. Yeah, it was pretty much like a like a gunshot start. <laughs> Excellent sign. And and to put this match over, I mean, damn, it was good. Like it, it was a decently length, even at like a, still like a, a small four minute. Uh, I didn't I, have a problem with this yeah. match at all, which is yeah. which is something, which is something strange to say considering it involves the Bellas. Yeah, that too. Um, and I didn't have a problem with this match until the end. And uh, I'll get to what that problem was. And uh, before anyone makes the, makes the obvious Jingus joke, yes, there was a roll up, and that's not the issue. Um, so steadily throughout the match, uh, Nikki gets her offense back, and she st- and it, it's very much a back and forth. But uh, for the most part, it looks like AJ's going to lose, and uh, the ref catches. Um, Nikki and Bree trying to do the twin magic, and um, then a and then Nikki goes for the tilt whirl, and AJ counters, rolls her up one two three, win. A uh, good end to a good divas match. However, the match ends, and my old nemesis Booker T chimes in oh, with yeah. chimes in with that wasn't a victory. Uh, and, oh. and at first, I, I, I literally hit pause for a second. And mind you, this was not DVR. I was watching this live. So I hit pause and like, and I determined I must have heard him wrong. Because Booker, who's a face, just claimed that AJ, who is also a face, at least in comparison to Daniel Bryan, I... Did not just didn't just win didn't win. Uh, what? And, and so Michael Cole and Josh Matthews, who almost never agree on anything, both proceed to assault Booker on his opinion on why that's not a win, and begin questioning why it's not a win. To which Booker responds with, oh, "It's it's not a win in my book." What? What do you mean that's not a win, you moron? I remember, I think... One, two, three, match over! Guess who won? AJ! I seem to recall we were we were watching SmackDown, and it was at that point, uh, maybe a minute after he made that call, that War Machine came in, and he, I, I forgot exactly what he said. It was something like, fuck you! We didn't know what he was talking about until he just wouldn't stop going on about that for, like, the next 10 or 10 minutes. This guy's an idiot! 
Why is he on commentary? He has no idea what he's doing. He, he's, get him uh, off of there. Get him off. Get him off my commentary team. He's he, talking to my brain and making it feel bad about itself. <laughs> Shut this idiot up. Yeah, he, when he's. you like, have me agreeing with Michael Cole of all like, people. Uh, I apologize beforehand, but Booker T's the blackest guy with the whitest hat. Shut your face. <laughs> Don't lump him in with me. You know, I, I, I was expecting AJ to lose, so that would continue the, the angle where she's a fuck-up in Daniel Bryan's eyes. But I was I was pleasantly surprised that she she she's now new Divas champion. No, she didn't win the belt. It wasn't for the title. It put oh, her on the path. That and and, yeah, uh, it, it made, and it Nikki made doesn't have that. the belt, so... Oh, okay, well... What the fuck was that? <laughs> But yeah, and basically, after as an aside, after the match is over, uh, Daniel Bryan basically celebrates as if he had just won a, a match or done anything, because he always celebrates anytime he's uh, anywhere near. Yeah, Chris side. Jericho's gonna win it. <laughs> but yeah, um, we, we're we're told that on Raw, John Cena will face uh, newest member of Team Laurinaitis, Mark Henry. Or yeah, we're we're told. We're told, God, fuck it, fuck Booker T. Uh, I hate him. I hate him. He's stupid, and I hate him. Fashion of maturity, you are, War Machine. Shut your face. You're stupid, and I hate you, too. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, the, the next segment is uh, Match Darker talking with Cody Rhodes, and, and Cody starts off by saying that it's it's a game of chess, not checkers. Uh, no, exactly know where where exactly came. came uh, I don't that, know but, where he's going with. Yeah, this what 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 does that analogy apply to? Well, I don't know. But um, then he I mean, goes on to make higher the, on the mental plane or something. I don't know. Cody Rhodes goes on <laughs> to make the the point that he's been making for the past few weeks. Not not begrud- I'm not begrudgingly going to say that, but nonetheless, um, at WrestleMania, Big Show always loses. He's dominant for 360 days a year. But at WrestleMania, not so. Well, actually, now uh, this year it'd be the other 365 days. But what? But hmm, that's just every four. Um, yeah, Big Show's a choke artist at WrestleMania, which is a perfectly valid point. I don't think I've ever seen him win a match at WrestleMania. At least on a one-on-one match. He's Maybe he was tag a tag match. That's about it. But yeah, we go to our next match, which is uh, the aforementioned Cody Rhodes versus Great Kali, and about the Great Kali. He's the holy hell out of Kali. Yeah. Like I, I it was when shocking. Tifus, Tifus told me about it uh, after the show was over, and he told me that Cody Rhodes beat Kali's ass, and I was just like, "You must be confusing Cody Rhodes for someone else." <laughs> I uh, no, he he stomped him, he trounced him. Yeah, and like uh, speaking about Great Kali, like. Months ago, I would have never wanted to see him on TV, but like the, they're making a smart move in that Great Kali is just a guy that that the crowd likes, but that doesn't like is never going to achieve like anything, especially after fucking won a World Heavyweight Championship. So he's just putting over younger guys, people even smaller than him, and making like good heels look a lot better. With uh, yeah, and yeah, I'd agree with that. And Cody, Cody basically wearing him down, like taking out his legs, and then just precision striking him with 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 that springboard kick, is well, very good way to call the match. I mean, Cody was definitely no basketball. Hmm. He certainly, and he, but he did hold a grudge. <laughs> hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh. That was forced. Yeah. Fucking Cody Rhodes wins. Orton promo. I'm sure you can guess what it's about. Uh, Kane reveals his motivations in this promo. Um, and he talks about how uh, Orton, shaking hands with Orton after their last match together before Orton got injured, um, signified to Kane uh, that of what he'd become, which was basically a pussy. And, you know, fair enough, I guess. Uh, you know, to I whatever. 
and so Orton's like, well, look, you're stupid, so let's have a fight. Yeah. And Kane, Kane backs out, and he's like, no, no, no fights, and embrace hatred and such. Uh, throws his pyro, uh, and yeah, that'll be that. Yeah, and one thing Randy Orton said is that he's like, Kane, just listen to this. One thing that differentiates me from John Cena is that I fucking embrace the hate. I do it every day. And basically you're 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 preaching to the choir in, in the worst way possible. And it it's kinda what I don't like about this is that with through Randy Orton they basically invalidated and and just retired that, that catchphrase that Kane has. He's like, I, Oh he's, what I like about that is that it just solidifies to me why I like Orton currently so much. Because oh. the crowd is eating this up. And I sit All back right. and I'm watching this and I'm just like, this guy is nuts. <laughs> this guy is absolutely True, crazy. But... And everyone loves this guy. I, I, so I don't know. I guess... I, I'm loving it through association because I'm loving how stupid the crowd is acting about this. He would literally kill every single person in that crowd if it meant getting to the person he wants to fight. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if, if that's the way it amuses you, then okay, but... It, it amuses... Yeah, we're, yeah, we're speaking I, from two different standpoints. Like, I, I still... I still want to... I mean, I like, I like Orton in the ring. I like Orton in the ring a lot. But yeah. in terms of his character... Yeah. In terms of his character, that's what amuses me about it. I mean, I, I, I want them to, to bring something fresh out of Randy Orton. I phrased that correctly because, again, um, or the the performers are, are not the people who decide where their character is going to go. They they just they're just the they're just the vessels, and with their their skill, they either make it good or make it bad. No, I don't, I don't, and I don't think um, I think the stoic shit works for some people. I don't think Randy Orton is necessarily Jake the Snake. <laughs> You'd like to try, but, but that point has been belabored on and off, um, or not on and off, time and time again, whatever you want to say. Um, they they duke it out verbally, and they tease a confrontation, but it doesn't happen. Uh, commercial. Uh, so come back, and it's uh, uh, a recap of Drew McIntyre getting his job back. Blah! Hate this guy. Um. <laughs> And it's why would you hate him? And Teddy Long all comes on and he's like, let's stop this right now, player. You got your job back. I'm mad at you. But now you're going to have to fight the big show. Holla, holla, holla. And uh, so Big Show comes out and Drew McIntyre is like, what? What? <laughs> and I'm Scottish. And uh, Big Show beats the living tar out of Drew McIntyre. Referee stoppage. And Big Show wins. And then he's all like, yeah! What are you <laughs> doing, you overdressed haggis? <laughs> oh. He, he punches Loose Drew McIntyre with a knockout punch, which I think is important because it's a little more... Uh, it, it makes him look like less of a bitch than, say, I don't know, a pinfall or a DQ. No, I think that makes him look more more of a bitch because it's like, no, no need for pin. This guy <laughs> has been knocked the fuck out. <laughs> he ain't getting Okay, up. well, this is Drew McIntyre we're talking about. And he's, yeah, I, I, I wonder when they will start to... <laughs> he's, 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 he's not going to get a rise out of a I'm, I'm sure he's a big wheel in NXT or Superstars. Oh, we come back and Cody is backstage looking with a smirk. Uh, cut to commercial. Mark Henry versus Yoshi Tatsu. I'm pretty sure you can guess who wins. Oh, Yoshi. World's strongest uh, slam on, on the, the poor, unfortunate uh, Japanese soul. Oh. So we have, like, two squash matches in a row. Uh, and we come back, and Jericho versus Sheamus. It's time for the main event. Woohoo! Woohoo! And I liked this match. In fact, I really liked it. Well, we have to talk about Jericho's promo first. Uh, promo, Jericho. He basically uh, pretty much reiterates what he's been saying for the last few... Well, then I guess we don't really have to talk about it. He, uh, he's, he reiterates what he's been saying for the past few days. He brings, yes. up, uh, he brings up the drunkenness. Yeah, specifies that he has an alcoholic gene. So uh, he, he hides through his tattoos. He hides uh, through, through the X's on his hands and... 
and and but he knows who the real CM Punk is. Basically, a broken man, a guy with daddy issues, and uh, he every every time he he talks about pipe bomb, it's it's just he's just venting. He's that's all things he wants to say to his uh, his his dad. Yeah, I remember that. Then then he goes on to what he was claiming before that everyone is a is a wannabe from punk to the to the audience and and after he beats CM Punk he'll fix him a nice stiff drink. Oh, Seamus arrives. But actually uh before he before he ends the promo he says pipe bomb and he drops the mic. And it was actually oh, kind of funny. He mutters, he mutters CM yeah. drunk. Oh yeah see he gets the crowd to chant CM Punk and and along with them he he mutters CM drunk. Wait. <laughs> Uh, I like the way this is going. So yeah, yeah, I like this. Stuff. I like this feud a lot. I like it a lot more than uh, Rocky Cena. I like a lot of a lot of other things more than the build up to Rocky Cena. But um, yeah, Digifox, uh, say what you were saying because I'll definitely agree with everything about it. It, it was Jericho. Being, you know this uh, this was the, this would be the perfect. Hey, hey, this would be the perfect time to say something really racist, Digi. <laughs> I, I got nothing racist to say, really. Well, I mean, Chris did just say that he'd agree with anything that you say, so. <laughs> oh, god damn. <laughs> no, 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 no just racism is, is my stick. But, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I cut you off again. <laughs> Well, that, that's really all, all I got to say. I mean, it was a really good promo on Punk. We, we get some some insight as to how uh, Jericho plans to get a leg up on CM Punk. And then we have Chris Jericho versus Sheamus. Yeah. In a match that, if nothing else indicates, that I want to see these two feud after after their, their respective blow-offs. Yeah. Like, whoa. This like, it's really it's really hard to describe just how how much they were giving their all like, Sheamus, like selling very well, considering he's a big man like he he sells like very very well he's he plays the proper face in that regard. Jericho was stiffing the fuck out of him, like um yeah really, it, like every hit he gave him was hard. He was giving him some raw offense from like stuff like basically throating him in the turnbuckles to like doing a belly to back all all like all well put over by both people. this was definitely one of those matches where both participants make each other look good and the Daniel Bryan AJ completely... come out Mega you have anything to say uh, about this match eh, yeah not really it was it was a good match it main event you see, I can totally tell when you're playing video games on the show because you never say anything. <laughs> mm. yeah. uh, so but uh, significant, really quick, to the plot of the match. Uh, Daniel Bryan and AJ walk out to the ring to uh, to watch uh, before the, before we go to commercial. Yeah, this was a long match, too. What would you say, uh, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, just about. They they really gave it the time it, it needed, um, to the point where uh, the the finish, the very the false finish sequence was perfect. Like it, it was it was a thing of beauty with like Sheamus trying for the the crucifix power bomb and like uh, Jericho trying for a code breaker, but Sheamus just throws him into the corner. Um, a, v- a very like drawn out walls of Jericho with uh, like uh, Jericho looking very intense, Sheamus struggling. And it's and it's a, a very a nice uh, sort of flimsy. I I mean it would be a flimsy finish. It's a it's a DQ, but like they did it very well. Yeah, it was done. It was done well. Basically, uh, Sheamus is is sort of is on the outside, and Jericho has the ref distracted. And I guess in true AJ fashion, like this, this was a night of very effective front drop kicks. I believe Cody also did one. Sheamus is is kneeling down, and Daniel Bryan just stands there and 
delivers like a huge, huge front drop kick. Uh, Sheamus, the ref didn't see, so there's there's no DQ, and I take that back. I apologize. Um, the, the time runs out, and Jericho wins by countout. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, match ends, and Sheamus tries to chase after Brian, but he's got too much of a lead on him for it to matter. And Jericho's so busy celebrating that he doesn't realize that the huge Irishman has got back into the ring. Uh, and he brogue kicks the fuck out of Jericho. And uh, he brogue kicks him briefly. It's just like, yeah. And then show's over. All in all, definitely SmackDown's week. Yeah. It, it was, I mean, beyond the two like matches before the main event, Mark Henry Tatsu and uh, Drew McIntyre, big show. Very, very fun to match watch. Fun to watch matches that uh, uh, got their got their point across. The crowd was hot. Um, Tifa's really. I mean, uh, in in all honesty, it would have been a very even week had it not been for the rock concert. Uh, oh fuck the rock concert! Oh, oh god damn it! It's, it. <sighs> I've really got nothing else to say because, really, what else can you say besides fuck the rock concert? There's. I could pull out a massive string of swears, but it would not be enough. And you'd be stealing my gimmick. Hmm. Yeah, well, um, that was the week in WWE. Not as, uh,. Not as much of a, a morass as uh, TNA, as usual. <laughs> you mean WWE didn't suck nearly as bad as TNA did? No, no. No, <laughs> you can rest assured. Um, well, this is pretty much par for the course. Yeah. At, at, at this, um, there's by tomorrow, we, we have three more weeks until WrestleMania. Um, and we will end our show with everyone's favorite WWE version of everyone's favorite segment. What gets more screen time than John Morrison? So much to choose from. So, rock fucking a corpse <laughs> said, uh, gets more screen time than John Morrison. I'll say what I said before. Front drop kicks get more screen time than John Morrison. Agreed. Hey, G. Uh, Chris Ch- Christian's new Justin Bieber haircut gets more screen time than John Morrison. All right, I I have stop. <laughs> you take that back. What? It kind of looks Justin Bieberish. No, don't don't insult him. You do not insult Christian. I'm not insulting like, Christian. I'm just insulting the like haircut. That. <laughs> not like that. Freddie no Mercury spinning in his grave gets more screen time than John Morrison. Ah, oh, damn it! I want I want to change mine now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that that'll be the show for the week. Uh, don't forget to su- subscribe to us on Blip TV or YouTube to keep up to date with all our videos. You can also like us on Facebook. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Dark Match Wrestling. That's at Dark Match R A S L I N. You can also follow us individually on Twitter as well. Don't forget to check out TRA Productions, where all our videos plus lots of other great stuff is hosted. We're also on Reviewtopia in the community section, and last but not least, visit us at the Spoonie Experiment forums where we could hang out and you could shoot the shit with us each and every night. Yeah, uh, that's Dark Match for this week. Uh, Good night. Luck. Fuck off.